Let's take a look at a scenario. I'm using the async pipe to subscribe to an observable stream. And when that stream emits, it is going to pass the value in synchronously to this dumb presentational component. And this is just an example component that takes in this person input and just displays this little card that says hi and then the person's name. So this approach is nice because it allows our smart parent component, which is our home page that we're on here, to handle the observable stream or any other complex logic. And our dumb presentational component just gets a normal synchronous input to deal with. So if we look at the detail card component, you can see it's quite simple. We just have that simple input there and then we're displaying it in the template. So I've talked about these concepts in more depth in other videos. So I'll link to those if you want a little bit more context here. But we are going to focus on something else in this video. A problem with this code is that if we are using the ng if to handle subscribing to the async pipe, what this means is that if the stream has not emitted yet, this component is not going to display because this ng if will fail. And so what I've done here is I've just set up this dummy uh, observable here that's going to represent loading in this data from some kind of storage or API or whatever. But the point is this is going to take 400 milliseconds to load in. And I might even just change that to 800 just to make this a bit more obvious. So what's going to happen when we refresh our page here is you can see initially that component doesn't display because this ngif fails because that stream hasn't emitted yet. And then shortly after, after that 800 milliseconds, it does emit and then the component displays. So this is kind of a good thing. We can't really display our component if it doesn't have the data it needs, but just displaying nothing on the screen isn't exactly the best loading experience. Now this might only be a fraction of a second, but it still isn't going to give the best user experience. Instead, what we could do is implement some kind of loading indicator like a skeleton loading template. So this is a technique where you kind of mimic the structure of whatever it is that you're loading and replace it with some kind of loading indicator. So with this in place, if I refresh this page, you can see we get this box with some animated bars that are displayed in place of the content until the real content actually loads in. So to achieve this, we can use another technique that I've talked about recently. I'll leave another link to this one in the description. But the idea is that we have this ng template that is triggered in response to the state of the stream. So we have our stream set up here with the async pipe and then we have else loading. So basically, if this ng if is failing, we are going to trigger the loading template. So this is where we can define our sort of loading state, our loading template. And then this is where the real uh, component is going to be. So this works, but now we are defining the loading skeleton for a component outside of the component itself. We have defined this directly in our parent smart component, the home page, rather than in the detail card component. So if we wanted to use this component in multiple places, we would have to recreate this loading skeleton in multiple places as well. And if we had multiple components in this one uh, parent component, if we had multiple components on our homepage and each of these had some loading state we wanted to display, our parent component is going to become very bloated with all of this uh, loading skeleton sort of template stuff. Instead, what we can do is have the component itself responsible for defining its own loading skeleton, but this is going to require some changes. So first of all, we can just move the loading template inside of the dumb component itself. So now we have this template inside of our detail card component, and we have this ngif here hooked up to the person input. So if this person input is null or undefined, if it fails this ngif test, it is going to display this loading template. Otherwise it will display the actual component. But we have a bit of a problem in our homepage template. So as I mentioned before, this ngif is only going to pass if the stream has emitted a truthy value. So that means our component here isn't going to render until it has a valid input. So the loading template that is within that component is never going to display because by the time that this is actually displayed in our homepage template, we already have the valid input. So we still have this issue of just displaying a blank space until the stream emits. So if I refresh this, you can see that it's just displaying that blank screen and then it just pops in. 
And that's because this component never gets displayed until that stream emits. And so this loading template within that component never has a chance to display. So what we can do instead is set up a view model object in our ng-if instead. So we're doing the same basic thing here. We are setting up this uh, person stream with the async pipe to pull that value out, but we're assigning that to this person property inside of an object. Now, since this is an object, an object is always going to be truthy. So that means that this ng if is always going to pass. It doesn't matter if this stream hasn't emitted yet or if it emits a null value, it is still going to be within this object and the object is defined and truthy. So it will display no matter what. So what this means is that now we are actually going to just render this dumb component immediately and pass in the person input even if it is undefined or null. So once it has emitted, we're going to pass in the actual value, but initially we are going to pass person in as null or undefined. And that is going to allow this detail card component to actually display this loading template because it's initially going to get that falsy value, which is going to cause this ng if to fail and for this loading template to display. So if I refresh the application now, you can see we have that a loading indicator back and then the component pops in with the real person once it has finished loading. So now we can use this component wherever we like in our application and it can handle displaying its own loading template. And all we need to worry about in the parent component is making sure that we immediately render it rather than waiting for the stream it is using as an input to emit. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please consider leaving a like or a subscribe. It really does help the channel grow and get this in front of more people. And I will see you in the next video.